Well, good morning, church. Today we are celebrating All Saints Sunday, remembering those of First Church in our congregation who have joined that great cloud of witnesses in this past year as we all collectively remember what we have experienced in loss throughout the year as well. But as we prepare to hear that message today, I want us to reflect on the scriptures from the Old Testament from the prophet Haggai, beginning in the first chapter with the 15th verse and continuing through chapter 2, verse 9. In the second year of King Darius, in the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Yet now take courage, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Take courage, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord. Work, for I am with you says the Lord of hosts, according to the promise that I made you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit abides among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once again in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations so that the treasure of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former. And in this place, I will give prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. The word of God for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Today is actually a very special day in the life of the church. I hesitate, to say, excuse me, I hesitate to say it's one of my favorites, but in the spiritual aspect of it all, it is one that tops the list because we are here to celebrate all of the saints who have gone before. Now, as you heard me say earlier, Christmas is probably on the top of my list, but the reason that we celebrate all of these things is because of the promise that we have from God. So today, as we celebrate the saints of First Church, we're also reminded of what they have left us because we're in the midst of our stewardship campaign of opening new doors. And today is a good time to reflect upon the doors that those who have gone before us have opened up for us. Now today we do so from the standpoint of honor and of wonder, grieving our loss, while at the same time remembering them and also continuing the mission that they have laid for the church into the future. Now, I would be remiss today if I did not remind everyone that if you have not already voted for Tuesday's election, please make a plan to do so. While we endorse no candidates here at the church, we are reminded of Dr. King's words, another saint that we lost too soon in this country, that we are reminded that the church is not the tool of the state, but the conscience of a nation. And it is incumbent upon all of us not to take this freedom and that responsibility for granted, considering all that is happening in our state and our nation, and how the church can be a a voice in these discussions, as we will also participate later on today. Now, As many people know, last week we celebrated Halloween. It was a bit of a different experience for me being in a new place and a new neighborhood this year. In fact, we didn't really know what to expect for how many kids we might have, so we made sure to have plenty of candy, and uh, in fact, we panic bought a little bit and got more based on talking to our neighbors. Now we have Halloween candy that is about to become Thanksgiving candy, or perhaps even Christmas candy. 
But it was fun to see all those kids in their costumes, and I hope that you all had a chance to enjoy it as well. But as we celebrated that day, a few years ago, I came across something on Twitter that was promoting something called, wait for us, Jesus Ween. That's right. In case you were wondering, yes, I think it's as, just as ridiculous as it sounds. The premise being that while the world celebrates evil, Christians can use it to give gifts, dress in white instead of black. Oops. <laughs> and generally sped, spread the message of Jesus as opposed to celebrating evil demons. Now, aside from how ridiculous the name itself sounds, the other thing that I thought to myself when I read this is, clearly, whoever came up with this is someone who has no grasp of the origins of the day or what it actually means. All Hallows' Eve, or an Eve of Holiness, which we have shortened to Halloween, its origins go hand in hand with what we are celebrating today, actually on November 1st, All Saints' Day. The costumes originally are not celebrating evil, but the origins are rather mocking evil, showing that evil has no power over us because the power of God is revealed through the saints of the church who are being celebrated today. What's wrong with this thinking is that people not only do not know their history, but they have become so ignorant of it that while the culture has appropriated the day in a secular, sometimes almost mocking way, even we Christians don't know enough to be able to reclaim the day properly, assuming that it actually needs reclaiming. They don't even know that it was ours to begin with. They don't know, they don't remember, and so they have nothing to build on those memories because they are ignorant willfully or otherwise of those who have set it up that have gone before. That's why we're here today. To remember. To remember the saints of our past and remember that those saints still make this day and the days that were, came before and the days that will come after, they're the ones who have made this possible. We are here to celebrate how they have built the faith that they inherited and made a mockery of those who would do evil because in all things, even death has been defeated in the risen Christ. In our passage today, the prophet Haggai, which we don't read often enough, but in this case, I believe, gives us a word for us to live by. God asks, who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Take courage, all you people, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to the promise that I made when you came out of Egypt. My spirit abides among you. Do not fear. All of these words that the prophet utters to not only reassure the remnant that is in Israel after their destruction and captivity is to say, remember. Remember who you were. Remember who you are. And I am with you always. That is part of what today is all about. It is about remembering and having hope. Hope for a faithful future rather than fear of the future while recalling who it was that has helped us to get this far. The hope that we have in the risen Christ that those who have gone before us and built what we have here now will still be with us along with those who come after us because of what we build on today. Now, this is not to minimize our grief or to minimize our losses. Those losses are real. Our grief is real. 
And we must acknowledge that in order to deal with it appropriately. But what we must never lose sight of is that we always, even in the midst of death, we always have hope. The salient point which we are trying to pronounce here is that God will not forget and God will not abandon those who have gone before, nor should we ever forget that the promise which they have now received is being fulfilled in us. And we must never forget or neglect the task that we have before us, not only to remember our saints and what they have given us, but also what they have taught us. And the responsibility that we have to share that with a new generation and those who come after us. Today we honor their legacy, but today we also build upon that legacy and we never forget where our hope comes from or that our future is made secure with God. We remember many of our saints who have left a legacy for us that we will name. And while some of them you may not know, we know that there are others who knew them very well. We all remember together. And we honor them as they continue to remind us of the vision for the future that they had for the church. A vision that is unknown in specifics because times do change. But a vision that seeks an enduring future that would last well beyond them. We could mention the contributions of so many of our saints today, and we should, in our hearts, in our minds. But what we know is that it is incumbent upon us to remember, even if we did not know them, to remember them and what they have given us, because God will not let us forget. Baseball star Roberto Clemente, again another one who was gone too soon, said that if you have an opportunity to accomplish something that will make things better for someone coming behind you and you don't do that, you're wasting your time on this earth. I think we can safely say that we have several examples that we will remember here today of those who did not waste their time here on earth. But the challenge for us is that we must take what they have left behind and we must use that and build upon it so that all who come behind us can both remember and can have a hope-filled future. Now, let's think back for a moment on this effort of these probably well-intentioned but uninformed people of what they wanted to do about Halloween and rename it. And I think the biggest mistake in all of what they were trying to do is that we all too soon can forget what we do things for and why we do them. We can let our own cultural blinders inhibit us from seeing the glory and the legacy of what has gone before and instead turning it into a crisis of faith as opposed to a celebration of where our true faith and where our hope lies in. Just as the prophets have reminded the people then, we are reminded now that we all have a hope-filled future because of our past and our present and for what is to come. Because all of them, past, present, and future, are bound together now as one in Christ Jesus. As author Terry Todd writes, our most vulnerable as we walk through grief and hopelessness and even persecution, we walk humble. As we make peace, then we are filled and we are enlarged. We also know that we do not walk alone, but instead with those who in every place and time witness with their lives reflections of God's holiness. Today of all days is a reminder for us that while we do still grieve, 
We don't do it alone because God is with us. And we will be with all of the saints. And as we remember them today, and as we recall those who have gone on before, we honor them in their vision by moving forward in faith. Honoring their legacy of what they have built and continuing that vision for a hope-filled future. God calls us to remember. Let us remember them now and always as we build upon what they have given us and honor their memory by moving forward together in faith. Amen. Let us go and walk as the saints of old have walked before. Let us go with the renewed hope that God is with us in the midst of life and of death. And let us go with the hope of the new life that is given to all through the grace of Jesus Christ. Go with grace and peace and love in God's blessed kingdom. Amen.